On today's ChurchTechCast.com screencast show, bulleted lists, fill in the blanks, and element transitions in ProPresenter 6. Hi and welcome again to another episode of the ChurchTechCast.com Screencast Show. This is the show where every week I help you use software that we use here in the church. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. I'm your host. I'd love for you to ask your questions, by the way, which I answer every Friday on the ChurchTechCast.com Q&A show. So just leave those below the video. Wherever you're watching the video, that's cool. If you're listening to the audio, which you wouldn't be doing because this is a video show, so I'm just going to skip over that. Uh, but you can always drop me a line by heading over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash contact. There you can find all my contact information, like my Twitter handle, Paul Allen Cliff, P-A-U-L-A-L-A-N-C-L-I-F. And don't forget, you can subscribe to this show. So if you're on YouTube, click the subscribe button above. If not, head over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash subscribe. You can get these videos delivered automatically into your uh, podcasting client of choice for free. That's right. So uh, go ahead and do that. So I think that some of the new features in ProPresenter 6 are really exciting, but there are a couple of features that not everyone knew about from ProPresenter 5. So we're going to talk about element transitions, which is a new feature, and uh, fill in the blanks and bulleted lists, which is an old feature, and put those two together. So let's head over to my computer and take a look. Okay, so you probably recognize these element transition examples that come with ProPresenter. I've been doing some monkeying around over here, so we'll ignore those, but I've got these three in a constant loop, and I wanted to show you just basically how you create these. So we're going to right click and click Edit Slide. When you do that, you'll notice immediately by dissecting what they have here, here let me uh, clear out the slides layer here, that uh, when we take a look at one of these, each of these pieces is its own element. So if you can build a slide in ProPresenter, then you can do a slide element transition. So basically you would uh, come up with the background, that's this guy right here, see that's the background and then you might add this guy which is an icon and maybe some text maybe that and then each of these you can add as well so that is the basics is you want to build how you want it to look okay so think of this kind of like a photoshop light if that helps you so instead of creating a solid image, maybe you would even want to create it in Photoshop and then export each piece individually uh, or uh, send them out as PNGs if there's transparency involved like in this one, something like that. But then you want to bring them into ProPresenter, build a slide here with various layers. Now, you'll notice that we have this is just the whole slide transition, but if we go over here, let me make this fit a little bit better. You'll notice that we have this right here. So we can select any one of these, and when we do, we see the transition right here. So first off we have, try and actually 
make this smaller so that it can work a little bit better. Okay. So anyway, we've got build-in transitions. So those are the transitions that cause these to come in. And then we have a build-out transition. Now, in the default example, it doesn't have any build-out transitions. Uh, but you can see that I can uh, change the transition. Hold on, that's not it. So the build in is push in, but I've got some other options. I can make that an iris. And now I can make that slide in when do I want it? With the, with the slide, or on a click, or after a delay. So for the first one, those are my only options. But you'll notice for the second one, again, I have my choice of transitions, right? Uh, and by the way, I can change the duration of the transition and the direction if that's applicable. You know, like a cut, you'll notice there's no direction. There's no time because it's a cut. It's instantaneous. But for a dissolve, I've got duration. But for a Flip, uh, actually, where's one? Ah, a fly in, I've got a direction. So I can have it fly in from that direction if I wanted to. Okay, so once I've set that, um, then I have the choice of I can have this start when the slide starts, start when someone clicks on it, with the previous element. So this happens at the same time as this, or after a delay, and a delay of, say, three-tenths of a second in this case. So that's how you do element transitions. Again, you can uh, handle the build out as well. So select an element, click build out, change the transition. Let's say you want the good old standby 3D cube spin. I really don't recommend that. But let's say that you did for some reason want the 3D cube spin, you can do that. So, um, and you could go from there. So that's element transitions. But those aren't the only transitions here. Let me squish this back down so that the whole thing shows up on the screen. Almost. Those aren't the uh, only things that we would want to do. So if you're making uh, message notes here, let me get out of this. Some of you may not have noticed this um, when it comes to this existed in ProPresenter 5. In fact, it was one of the new features in ProPresenter 5. So let's right click again and edit slide. Now I have these um, different choices here. So I have Thursday 4-2 streaming host CDN or DIY, Friday 4-3 Triple had to go getting the free Pro 5 media, and is Pro 5 worth it? By the way, spoiler, I think it is. But now we have access to Pro 6, which is even more uh, worth it. Now, I could build in different text slides like we saw before. That's a possibility. But I have some other options. So if I go into... Um, it's here. Yeah. You click on the little letter up here and you have choice for text reveal. Bulleted list or fill in the blank. So it's still very basic, but with bulleted list, that means that when I show this, 
it will come in one at a time. So, and you can tell that when you're looking here by this guy. So, let's go ahead and we'll close out of that and we'll actually show this up. Oops. One bubble means one step. Not so much helpful. So, if I go to this, then, oh, okay, there we go. So, you'll see that that's the first line right here. And then if I click or press the space bar again, the second line shows up. So in order for that to work, there has to be a carriage return between those two. But if your pastor is a big fan of um, Rick Warren, you've probably done this as well. So let's go to uh, edit slide again. And let's say that we wanted to make this the go to next a fill in the blank. Now, how would you do that? Well, first off, you start by underlining it. So highlight your appropriate text again in the uh, little A tab up here. Select the underline. Now for text reveal, we're going to select fill in the blank. So again we have our little bubble here indicating that there's something going on. Let's close out of that and we'll go to the one before it. Yep, that's it. Now we go to the next one and you'll notice this blank is missing and when I click on it, it shows up. So let me show you that again. Previous slide right there and here look right here I'm going to get my mouse out of the way because I've got a highlight on it and see how that shows up. So those are three things that you can do to make your presentations more interesting, more impactful, just make it easier for people to engage with what's going on. Well, I hope you found that instructive and entertaining. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of power in these features, especially when you combine them together. So you can create some really interesting things. If you like this content, you'd like my email newsletter, I promise you. In fact, double your money back if you don't like my email newsletter. Of course, it's free, so two times nothing is nothing. But that's beside the point. You want to head over and get my email newsletter by heading over to Trinity Digital Media dot com slash gifts g-i-f-t-s and pick up uh, a free church tech gift and a free subscription to my email newsletter where i give you even more tips and tricks and tell you about some of the really exciting stuff that's happening here at trinitydigitalmedia.com and boy it's getting exciting speaking of which i am rolling out products all the time in my store now these are things that I have made thinking of you, thinking, okay, if I could go back in time and talk to my younger self and train him on some of the stuff that I know now, what would I do? This is what I would do. So I've made this so that you don't have to scour the internet for hours and hours and hours trying to find this information. You can just head over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash store and pick up some uh, training at really great prices so that you can have more time with your family, more time to do ministry, and do a better job with the time that you were using. Until next time, go out and change eternity. This is Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com.